track, live from Indianapolis, the men's 1,500-meter final. American record, 329.77. Sydney Marie set in Cologne, Germany, back in 1985. The meet record held by Steve Scott. One of the top contenders here today, wearing the green and black, number 181, Steve Holman, former Georgetown star. 27 years old and was born in Indianapolis, so this is a return for Holman to the place of his birth. We mentioned earlier that Holman has been America's top miler over the last few years in terms of performance, but has not made the U.S. team the last two years. And Seneca Lassiter, you have to keep an eye on him, not so well known unless you saw the NCAA championships here on CBS. He was the winner this year out of Arkansas. Just 20 years old, has run well in the college meets as well as the Penn Relays, which we saw earlier in the season. 1996 U.S. Junior Champion. He's just finished his sophomore year in Arkansas. Lots of high hopes riding on this young man. Look at the rest of the field. Again, 12 finalists. Terrence Harrington, one to watch. Number 180, three-time U.S. champion, still running well at age 30. We mentioned Seneca Lassiter, and also Jason Pyra, number 339. Former BYU star, could be a strong contender here today. And away they go. And a lot will depend on how the race goes, what has happened over the last few years, and it's not surprising there have been tactical races in these national championship races, and it's often come down to blistering finishing kicks, sometimes letting athletes into the hunt who might not otherwise be there if the race went faster. Holman jumps into the lead, and Seneca Lassiter goes with him on the inside. Craig, you and I have talked so many times about what should Steve Holman do? How could he run those two races in 95 and 96 that kept him off those teams? How could he run them differently and still qualify to make the team? I think Steve Holman basically doesn't have a physical problem. He just needs to believe more in himself. His confidence level needs to come up so that he can do what he actually is physically capable of doing, which is not only race with anyone in this race, but race with anyone in the world. He proves that when he goes to Europe for the big invitational races where he regularly finishes in the top two, three, or four athletes, but he has had trouble in these qualifying type races, probably because he thinks just a little bit too much. Shannon Lamora running in third place. Right there also in position is Jason Pyra. Holman still on the lead with Lassiter. Now I think this is a disaster, Craig. Going out this slow, he's got a good finishing kick, but guys like Terrence Harrington and others in this field have better finishing kicks than Holman. Doesn't he have to take the sting out of this field if he's going to have a chance? I think Hol what Holman will likely do is wait until about seven or 800 meters to go and then just make an undeniable move run an extremely fast last 800 meters. That's the way he'll try to win it. 37-year-old Jim Spivey has taken the lead here. The former Indiana star, 1987 bronze medalist at the World Championships. Got any shot at all, Craig? Well, I was a little surprised to see Spivey in the 1,500 meters instead of the 5,000. He's such a great runner, such a great veteran, and so popular here in Indiana where he's done so much of his running. Uh, I think it'll be tough for Spivey, but you can be sure he will do whatever gives him the best chance of making it. He's that kind of runner. Now Carl Piranha, number 317 from Haverford College, a 21-year-old, has taken the lead. Broke four minutes for the first time earlier this year as they've run two 64-second laps to get to around 208 at 800 meters. A slow pace, barely faster than the women ran just a few minutes ago. And Pranya up there sacrificing himself. You can see a little bit of a headwind there as he keeps his head down. Jason Pyra, the 96 Olympian, right behind him. Spivey still in the thick of it, as is Holman. But this is shaping up to be a kicker's race. In about another half a lap, this thing is going to get extremely interesting. Pranya on the lead. Pyra second. Seneca Lassiter trying to make a move. Now Holman comes back. Holman almost going down as runners are pushed and shoved. Holman back in about sixth place with one lap to go at two minutes and 52 seconds. Holman trying to get position, but he's boxed in there in traffic, running in about fourth place now, and Piranha back on the lead. Shannon Lamora running in second place. Lamora trying to go by Piranha and does. Holman trying to go through on the inside. He's boxed. It's a mess. This is the kind of thing that happens when you have a slow pace. Lamora got stepped on. He's well back, and he is out of the race. And now Seneca Lassiter takes over. The youngster, he has nothing to lose in his mind. He won the NCAA last year. Now Holman and Holman. Pyra. Here comes Holman. Holman 
Lassiter and Pyra. Lassiter and Holman in a stretch battle. Shoulder to shoulder, Lassiter slightly ahead. It's gonna be Lassiter. Holman won't get him, Holman is second. And here comes Piranha for third. Carl Piranha squeezing in for third place. And the NCAA champion proving he's for real, Seneca Lassiter, finishing ahead of Steve Holman. Well, we saw some bizarre racing yesterday at 400 meters when they stay in their lanes. Here's one where they're out of their lanes and is equally bizarre. We've said it so many times, a slow pace means that anything can happen and just about everything happened Craig, in that race. Craig, how much of uh, Holman's problems getting boxed in prevented him from having a better stretch run? Do you think it would have turned out the same? On that last lap, he was in all this traffic. Holman was in so many different boxes. There you see him all the way on the inside as they go down the back stretch. And you see him trying to get a little bit of space. Runners getting stepped on, having their legs brushed by other runners. None of this is intentional. None of it is against the rules. It's just what happens when you run so, such slow-paced running. Holman stays on the inside, somewhat improbably, although he didn't have much choice at that point. Shannon Lamoro was the guy really knocked totally out of the race with that traffic. Now, once they came to the head of the straightaway, Holman did something very good. All that pushing, all that shoving, he maintained his composure, gathered well, but it was actually Lasseter who had run the most trouble-free race of just about anyone who was able to profit from that. I think you're right, Tim. Holman just in too much trouble early in the race to have his best finishing kick. Well, so Seneca Lasseter, this year's NCAA champion, making his mark, as so many stars have. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Two weeks in a row, Tim, as you said, for Seneca Lasseter, but describe that last lap, very physical down there. First of all, I'd like to say, to God be the glory. I mean, last lap was just basically all out. I was trying to fight for those top three positions. Because, you know, as you already know, the three people, the three spots are for the world team, so I was just going for that. That's all I was thinking about, coming down the home stretch and winning, of course. You, you've got plenty of college eligibility left. Your coaches want you at Worlds? I hope you do. <laughs> I ain't run for nothing. <laughs> Talk about the final stretch with Steve Holman and what it took to get by him. Well, I don't really know what it took to get by him. I guess it's hard work. I mean, I was working as hard as I can go, I mean, hard as I can push it, so he kind of tightened up a little more than I did, and I just got to the line before he did, so. You still need to make the qualifying time. What needs to happen there? I think I'm ready to run the qualifying time. I just need to get into a fast race. I mean, as you already know, these championship races tend to go out slow and end up as a kick, but hopefully when I go to Europe, I get into a race where I'll be dragged along and can meet the qualifying standard, so. Good luck to you, Seneca. Thank you. Tim? Seneca Lassiter, one more look at that final stretch, and Lassiter and Perani have until July 16th to meet the 3.38 qualifying standard time for the Worlds. Jason Pyra finished fourth, would go if the others don't make the standard. A thrilling race here in the men's 1500. And there are the final results. Lassiter, Holman, and Carl Perania from Haverford College. CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Outdoor Track and Field Championships continue after this message and a word from your local station.